good evening or good afternoon as the case may be but that certainly doesn't have quite the same ring to it regardless my name is blake m howard and i will be your storyteller for this special one shot session of vampire the masquerade fifth edition brought to you by paradox interactive vault comics and the world builders charity organization I'd like to uh, take this opportunity and thank everyone involved for putting this together, allowing us to blend the streaming universe of L.A. by Night and the comic book story of Vampire the Masquerade, Winter's Teeth, into one big happy family within this ever-growing world of darkness. Lastly, I would like to thank all of you for tuning in and donating to this wonderful cause. Our team has placed links to the World Builder Charity page on the panel below, and should you feel inspired to donate, your contribution will be graciously accepted. <clears throat> a uh, few points of order before we begin our story for this evening, starting with a word of caution. Vampire the Masquerade is a gothic punk game of personal horror. As such, horrific situations and scenarios have a tendency to occur. Should you be of a disposition where matters of violence and other mature subject matter can prove upsetting, we ask you to exercise personal discretion in viewing. That said, Vampire the Masquerade is, above all other things, a game, and no game is worth the well-being of your fellow players. We encourage anyone who engages in this or in any other role-playing game to always keep a clear line of dialogue with one another and to ensure that everyone's comfort levels are always appropriately maintained. Mindful and considerate play above all. After all, what good is blood-sucking and political backstabbing if we can't all have fun while we do it? Now, some of our viewers will most assuredly recognize two of the characters here on stream, but just in case they do not, let's have our Los Angeles kindred introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Eric Ishii, and I'm playing Annabelle. Me, Dave Walters. I'm playing Victor Temple, undisputed Baron of the Valley. And let's see if that rain continues after this evening. Perhaps it'll we're, get even better. We're expanding, y'all. Our guests, Teeny Howard and Patrick Rothfuss, will, as ever, be introduced at a dramatically appropriate moment. And now, without further ado, let's tell a vampire story. At the end of the 20th century, vampire life was coming to a head. The twin factions of the Sabbat and the Camarilla waged a violent and bloody war that sent the eastern seaboard of the United States spiraling into chaos. A red star shone ominously in the night sky, and ancient vampires began to stir from their aeon-long slumber. To a great many, it seemed as though the vaunted Knights of Prophecy, Gehenna, was finally upon us. And then... Not with a bang, but with a whimper. It all stopped. The Red Star, Wormwood, disappeared from view. The Sabbat abandoned their holdings in the Western Hemisphere in favor of following a dogmatic crusade into the Levant, and the Camarilla, now faced with a newly outfitted and informed collective of mortal hunters, folded within itself for the many Anarchs of the World of Darkness. It would seem that their time had finally come. In the twin cities of St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota, a tenuous truce has long held sway, but now that truce has been broken. Prince Samantha Moraine is dead, leaving the twin cities ripe for the taking, and it is in a small Minnesota town, several miles outside of Minneapolis, that we begin our story. As one peels off of the exit ramp of I-94, the steady paving of the highway transitions to a pockmarked and potholed meander. The edges of the road are as sawtoothed and staggered as a car key. It's the sort of country road that exists beneath a veil of thick winter fog, where GPS and cellular service begins to get dodgy where your destination can only be foreseen as far as your car's headlights can pierce. About half a mile past vast, unpopulated pastures, a yellow sign glows and reflects off of the fields of snow. Victor Temple. 
been a lengthy, boring, uneventful car ride all the way from sunny Los Angeles across the Colorado Rockies and into the snow-stained states of the Midwest. Accomplished in two 14-hour shifts, your driver, Ryan, has dutifully ensured that the interior sun guards, designed exclusively for just such a long road trip, are sufficiently sealed and checked. Leaving your overnight lodgings before the break of dawn, you are gently roused from your daily torpor just as dusk falls over the Minnesota state line. You recall the cryptic missive, the invitation, and how it was left addressed to you at Club Maharani during daylight hours. You recall reading the invitation, which bore the signature of someone calling themselves Reverend Lenoir, an anarch from the Midwest hoping to expand their network to a national, perhaps even global level. Recent shakeups in the leadership of the Twin Cities had made the location ripe for the picking, and long has the local Anarch movement suffered under the grip of its supposedly deposed leader, the late Prince Samantha Moraine. The date, time, and location of the meeting had all been provided, and with a few weeks to spare before your scheduled departure, it gave you plenty of time to ensure your preparation. Is there anything that you would like to declare, sir, that you have uh, ensured to bring with you to this meeting? Yes. Um, first of all, Ryan, this is incredible. The only reason this car doesn't fly is because it doesn't have wings. Uh, I, As you say, sir. I have left Campbell behind to keep an eye on things and make sure that no one realizes I am out of town. And I have brought one of my Ralphus pistols with me, not my beloved gold-plated one, but the sleeker, more understated, dress black Ralphus pistol. Go ahead and make that note now. Uh, and, Ryan, and as, uh, much, go ahead. as much as much as I detest the cold, I got to tell you, this this is uh, it's not a terrible look, though. This is um, you get to do some interesting things with layers out in this part of the world. Uh, Ryan looks into the uh, into the the rearview mirror, um, catching your eye somewhat nervously. He's still somewhat new and, you know, doesn't spend a whole lot of time uh, reporting to you, tending to report more directly to Campbell. Uh, but he nervously speaks up. Uh, we're, we're nearly there, sir. This is, uh, this is supposed to be the exit. He nervously checks over the GPS and its automated voice informing you of its ever-increasing repetitive signal loss. Uh, are you sure this is the correct location, he asks, as cresting over the horizon, you finally see it, the meeting location, in all of its splendor or lack thereof. Bunny's Pancake House is a 24-hour truck stop diner fused with a gas station located outside the small town of Slidell, Minnesota. There are six to eight automobiles parked with their wipers pulled up to prevent them from freezing to the windshield. Keeping his eyes peeled to his surroundings, Ryan pulls into one of the many numerous parking spots at at least what he assumes to be a parking spot, the snow that falls freely from the night sky, has already formed a thin sheet over the pavement. Not enough to require four-wheel drive yet, but enough to obscure any of the designated markings. Still, there appears to be plenty of space. Ryan, ever eager to stretch his aching human legs, turns the car up and emerges and immediately feels every muscle within his body suddenly contract and cramp. His breath becomes a cloud of gray fog, and you catch his jaw begin to spasm as the cold within his body turns to ice. Walking stiffly toward the back seat, he reaches a gloved hand out and pulls the driver's side door. Holy shit, it's cold out here, uh, sir, he blurts out. You know, I don't understand why anybody lives somewhere like this. It's like nature's clearly trying to kill you. It's like living on the rim of an active volcano. Like, what is the point of this? The Earth does not want you here. I don't know. I much prefer Southern California. <sighs> Seeing and his uh, his reaction, it, it, it reminds you perhaps that now might be a good time to activate Blush of Life if you have not already done so. So I can feel this cold. Okay, right. Uh, see, we do things differently in Southern California. I just walk around and make people forget that they've seen me, but when in Rome... I do turn so it on. You are excellent. And exponentially you more miserable now. 
<laughs> Indeed, yeah, you feel your undead heart stir. It pumps the fine vintage wine that is your Ventru blood through your body. Your cheeks catch a healthy flush, which is almost immediately met with a sharp and stinging pain of a winter chill that can only be described as profane. The dashboard on your smartphone reveals that it is a harrowing 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside with a projected overnight low of negative 5. As your diagram begins to function and your lungs breathe in frigid oxygen, your manufactured body heat also starts to produce a deep fog upon exhaling. It's not comfortable, but it certainly looks natural. None of this is natural. Uh, Ryan. Um... Yes, sir. Get some coffee, stick by the car, because this is clearly a trap, but it's so obviously a trap that it's not a trap, so it's either this was put on by a Malkavian that's a fan of Tarantino, or it's a trap. Either way, we gotta be prepared to leave quickly. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, keep, keep, keep the car running as, uh, as, as long as I can. It, no, not, not as long as you can, Ryan. Stay with the car. We need to be prepared to leave quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, as you say, sir. And um, he, uh, go ahead. Do I have a particular contact or place I'm supposed to meet someone, or have I just been told to be here at this time? Simply been told to be here at this time. But then speaking I hit of which, you are heading toward the diner? I do want to just quickly survey the cars, uh, roughly how expensive they are and where their license plates are from. Sure thing. Give me a wits plus awareness check, if you please. Ooh. Got to dig out the barren sheet. Forgot what it was like to have to exert effort. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, presumably, I'm at hunger one, or do you, would you like yes. me to rouse? Hunger one. Okay. Yeah, hunger one is fine. We prepared for this. I knew I was yeah. coming out on a business trip. Rude to show up hungry. Uh, four successes. Four successes. Excellent. Well, if this is indeed the meeting place, it certainly is unique. It seems to be riding the line between secluded and crowded. There are a fair number of vehicles in the parking lot. Not to mention a few semi-trailers. Most of them bear a uh, Minnesota license plate. Um, however, you'll notice of the two semis there, of course, it's much harder to read their license plates themselves, but you can assume that they might not necessarily be from in-state. Uh, but surely not every car that is parked here could be here from the meeting. Uh, as you peer through the blustering winter winds, you can also see what appears to be a utility garage. Its door is currently banging open with every gust of the gust, rather, of the not insignificant wind. Underneath a poorly fastened blue tarp, there seems to be some manner of snow plow or, or all-terrain vehicle. And you also notice what appears to be a pickup truck. Its tailgate is currently festooned with a homemade camouflage paint job. In the rear window, you can see what appears to be a gun rack uh, with what look to be two long guns of a sort, perhaps hunting rifles, perhaps shotguns. Um, but the layer of snow that has already formed over this vehicle also indicates that this person may have been here for some time. Annabelle, you've been doing a lot of motorcycle riding recently, correct? That's right. I see. Is it safe to say that you might be traveling that way to the meeting this evening, or are you taking the trusty Civic? Oh, uh, absolutely. Civic's still in LA. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it is a much shorter journey for you than it is for Baron Temple, yet the icy roads and the ever-strengthening winds do make this more than just a leisurely ride. In fact, it's fair to say that anybody who's not blessed with the celerity that your Bruja blood grants you may have difficulty maintaining their balance on a night such as this. For the most part, the precipitation had been light and scattered, but after approaching within 20 miles of Slidell, you definitely noticed the night air take an even deeper chill. 
Still, this meeting may be too important to pass up. And though you've been outside of Los Angeles for some time, an anarch with the passion and the drive that you seem to inspire never wants for influence, no matter what domain they may currently be in. You'd heard of this proposed meeting of the rebellious minds, and when you received your own invitation, what was your immediate reaction? We have to go. We have to go. The only way that we can make big change is together. Truly noble endeavor, one that will hopefully bear fruit. Your engine revs and pulls you screaming down the highway, weaving in and out of lanes, hindered by the turtle-paced passing of cars and trucks with their hazards currently blinking. In a short amount of time, you too find your way to the parking lot of Bunny's Pancake House. And it is at this point, Baron Temple, as you are looking over some of the other vehicles uh, within the parking lot, that the trademark sound of a motorcycle engine can be heard pulling up from the distance. And before too long, you see what appears to be a familiar face. I believe you're currently muted, Baron. Speechless, I see. Great. <laughs> Annabelle? Victor? What are you doing here? Where have you been? I I called in so many favors looking for you. I don't want to talk about it. I'm here for the meeting, same as you. All right. Business first. But before I leave this godforsaken frozen hellhole, you and I are going to talk. We'll see. Do you know where we're supposed to go? No, all I know is that we're meeting here. Don't know who, don't know where. But whoever sent you the invitation found you when I couldn't. No, oh, Midwest works different than uh, LA. The rest of the country works very different from LA. I know, that's why I'm in LA. <sighs> what do you think? Waffle Hut here or creepy murder shed? Ah, uh, I mean, we're anarchs, so creepy murder shed seems like the best bet. Probably. However, it's very—I don't know. It feels very American God. So diner. Hey, I'm glad you're all right. Good to see you too. Um, rebellious angst aside, we, we do need to talk about X. And I walk towards the diner. Gotcha. So you make your way toward the diner. Victor, uh, as you step onto the, uh, the, the, uh, the snow covered parking lot, currently sort of caked with black ice and other slipperiness. I imagine your rather fancy shoes don't have the best traction on them, but, uh, excuse me, excuse me. I knew, I knew where, I knew where I was coming. Okay. I, they, there's, there's some Tams yeah. that can hold a shine. It's fine. Excellent. All right, then. <laughs> then you need not worry too much about slipping and falling. Uh, at any rate, uh, as you enter Bunny's pancake house, a two-note electronic chime sounds as you step inside from the anteroom where a thick, bristly carpet has been provided for patrons to wipe their shoes before entering. There's a yellow sandwich sign that cautions those entering to watch their steps all the same. Behind that, there's another sign of a deep forest green that requests that you please wait to be seated. And yet it's not long before a hostess comes to greet you, but it does give you enough time to check over your immediate surroundings. Bunny's is a well-lit diner, the large bar dividing the dining room from the kitchen. The walls are adorned with various stuffed rabbits, both of the plush and taxidermied variety. Over the intercom, members of the band are currently playing a song advising some girl named Annie to take a load off. 
And there seems to be roughly five other inhabitants within the diner. A broad-chested African-American in a trucker hat and heavy flannels huddles over a hearty bowl of chili at the bar while a few stools down a broadly built middle-aged woman with closely cropped hair warms her hands on an enormous mug of coffee. At the table near you, uh, near the window, rather, are two rosy-cheeked, stocky gentlemen dressed in camouflage snowsuits and puffy orange vests, and they seem to be devouring a plate of ribs between the two of them. Upon hearing the chime, all eyes turn to you, briefly, with your trappings and whatnot, as well as your unfamiliar faces. You don't attract too, too much attention. This is, after all, a truck stop, and so vagrant faces are rather common. Uh, regardless, the, uh, the hostess approaches you. She is a middle-aged, uh, or rather a, a blonde 30-something with a rather careworn face that seems to make her look a little bit older than perhaps she regular, or normally is. Hi there, how many are in your party? She asks, looking at the two of you. I lean over to Annabelle and I say, I understand why they didn't invite Nellie. She would have gone into a frenzy purely from the sight of this place. I think this place would have gone into a frenzy purely by the sight of her. You are not wrong. How you want to play this? We got good cop, bad cop them. Are you representing you? I'm doing me. How are we? We just have to get a table for right now. We can just kind of We'll figure it out, all right? Oh, the game is already afoot, my friend. And I just gonna turn around and say, two. We are a party two? of two. Excellent. Well, right this way. Uh, she leads you to a foretop and sets down a pair of laminated menus in front of you. Can I get y'all started on anything to drink or anything? Uh, I'll have uh, co- uh, coffee, please. Coffee. Okay, sounds good. Anything uh, special you, about that? Yes, sir. Um, I activate awe. <laughs> Sucks her head to the side and leans forward. Oh, what was her name? Sorry. Oh, um, you see uh, underneath this, she's wearing a name tag that seems to say Rita. R-I-T-A. I very much am like, excuse me, Rita. Rita, you have beautiful eyes. Um, oh, gosh. Go on, I, un- <laughs> I understand that people are always coming and going through here, but have you seen any other um, unusual-looking travelers in the last hour, hour and a half? I know it's real funny that you mention that, because actually this evening I have. There have been a couple of people that have come through. Oh, gosh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I think I know what you guys are here for. I um, hope you don't, Rita. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, I, I suppose uh, I, I'll, uh, I'll I'll get you your coffee and uh, I- anything for you, sir. Just if you could point me in the direction of those unusual people. Once oh, my yeah, friend gets yeah, her yeah, coffee. Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely. I'll have Bunny come by and preach. He'll probably want to talk to you, guys. Uh, he uh, Rita turns and, and is looking at you, Annabelle. She seems to keep looking back towards you for some reason, even though her attention is definitely still pulled away by the magnetism of, uh, of, of Baron Temple. I, I'm sorry, uh, you're, you're new around here, are you? Yeah, just passing through. I got gotcha. you. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's so hard when you can't place a face. I feel like I've seen you somewhere before. Oh, I highly well, doubt that. Was that your motorcycle that you were riding out there? Yep, that's mine. Oh, gosh, you must be rather crazy if you're riding it out in this weather, huh? Oh, I swear. Anybody who rides a motorcycle in any weather is a little crazy. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. But gosh, I swear I've, I've seen you somewhere before. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll, uh, I'll get you as your, your drinks, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have Bunny come by. Um, no problem. And uh, with that, Rita steps away. Yeah, when I see she's trying to leave, I release the awe, you know, so she can <laughs> go about her business. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. This is um, unique. 
Have you ever met with anybody from the other free states? You know, along the way, I've met one or two people from here and there, but, you know, L.A. keeps me pretty tied up, as you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to a meeting this big? Because I feel like, I don't know, since traveling, L.A. seems small, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is the center of the known universe, but yes, there is a, a big world with many kindred in it. That is true. I think, uh, you know, when I played ball, I went all over the world. I've been everywhere. I chose to settle down in L.A., so I never felt like I was missing anything because I knew what my options were. I've never really been outside of L.A., much. You know, uh, too long. Oh. I was just going to say, I know we don't have much time um, before somebody's going to approach us, but um, I really have been worried about you. I know. Since that night. And it seems that just as you are saying it, you do track the movement of a gentleman emerging from the kitchens who is looking directly in your location. You can assume that this man is the eponymous bunny. Uh, he wears a grease stained apron that's tied around his rather round waist. He has thick, hairy fingers that are caked in batter and breading and his gray curly hair is currently sweat plastered to his wrinkled forehead as he's obviously been leaning over a grill for quite some time. Nevertheless, as he walks in front of you, you catch the unmistakable scent of Chanel number no. five as he approaches. That's a number um, of health code violations, just like four. <laughs> oh yeah, easily. But he approaches and looks to the two of you. And as he approaches, he immediately sort of lowers his voice and leans over. I am terribly sorry. I told Rita to inform me if we are to have any sort of unusual looking guests and she did so, but bless you, she works hard. Uh, anyway, if, if you two want to follow me. And he stands and, or rather, you know, backs away from the table and, uh, 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 waves his hand out, offering to to uh, offering for you to follow. I bring my I coffee. Would... Oh wait, I, I don't have coffee. The coffee didn't arrive yet. Yeah, I I drape my scarf over my arm to hide the fact that my hand's very much on my holster as we're walking through this place. Gotcha. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh. As he leads you, Bunny crosses the floor of the diner in rather lengthy strides that you almost wouldn't expect from someone of his comparatively short frame. Uh, with but a few steps, he has crossed the threshold from the diner's floor to the section of Bunny's truck stop that hosts a gas station slash convenience store. It's equally bright and gaudy. There are half a dozen shelves that stock everything from USB chargers to candy bars and cowboy hats and motor oil. Uh, before the cash registers, you see a set of what look to be three video poker screens and seated in the middle of the floor, a hexagonal arcade style uh, coin pusher machine that's stocked with quarters, clips of bills, and even what looks to be big pieces of, of gaudy silver jewelry. Regardless, Bunny continues to lead you past the register into what appears to be a back office area. The hallway then suddenly bends a sharp right, and it ends at a set of double doors several paces down. I hope I'd, you all didn't have much trouble traveling. I lean over to Annabelle, and I say, if he's taking us to a truck stop champagne room, I will kill this man. I, that's not, that can't be a thing. That absolutely cannot no, be a thing. We've I established like everything. I refuse to believe that that is a thing. Everything is real. Everything is real. No, no, no trouble. No trouble at all finding you. It's the directions, timing, just right to here. Whatever uh, here well, is. It's excellent having so many of you guys around again. It <laughs> makes me feel like I'm recapturing my youth a little bit. 
What are you getting up to in your youth? Ah, well, sweetheart, I was one of the original Midwest blood dolls, if you know what that means. And he waggles his eyebrows a little bit. I I don't. I don't. Ah, I see. I I can never tell how young the, you know, person is that I'm speaking with. Anyway, it was just something that me and a couple of friends of mine would do every weekend or so. We would get dressed up and go down to the Succubus Club and, you know, have ourselves a good time. Anyway, those nights are behind me now. I mainly do what I can, just um, helping others to facilitate things such as this, uh, meetings. At any rate, uh, speaking of which, uh, we're, we're right up here. And he approaches the double doors and knocks thrice upon them. There's the sound of a lock that unfastens and resonates on the other side, and the door opens into a small yet spacious meeting room. There is a foggy glass window uh, looking into the diner on the rear wall. And at the center of the room is a round table, around which are seated numerous kindred, or at least what you can assume to be kindred. The one standing at the door, the same one who opened it, is a Caucasian man of quaffed brunette hair. His sideburns are trailing down to just barely past what is considered fashionable, these days anyway. And he wears a button-down shirt that is tucked into khaki slacks, cinched in a brown braided belt. And with that, he says, clasping his hands together, our merry band is complete. Come, my friends, come inside, come warm yourselves, he offers to you. I come in and I sit in the nearest ta- in the nearest chair that's open. Excellent. There are, uh, there are certainly two to three empty chairs that are available for you to take your uh, seat within. As you step within, the low lighting and the rather toasty and noisy heater gives off the vague impression of some sort of reptile cage or something of that nature. Good evening, my friends. Good evening. He greets you once again with a warm handshake and an even warmer smile. I am the Reverend Marquis Lenoir, and I am the facilitator of this here concatenation. Uh, I trust y'all's travel wasn't simply too dreadful. I never did quite get the hang of navigating these icy roads myself. It was a real thrill. Hi, I'm Annabelle. Thank you for the invitation. You are most perfectly welcome, Annabelle. And I trust that you must be... And he uh, looks to you, Victor, reaching his hand out. I do shake his hand, and I just say, Baron Victor Temple. And yes, you probably took a couple of years off my driver's life. (laughs) Well, I see. I I hope that uh, the return journey will not be quite as as formidable then. Uh, And unfortunately, it may seem that we might be in for a bit of bad weather this evening, but... I want everyone, and he turns and addresses everybody at the meeting, I want everyone to rest assured that should our dialectic run into the wee hours of this morning, Bunnies is equipped with numerous light-proof chambers and libations generously provided by the circulation system. Circulatory system, rather. All humanely sourced, I am told. So if we need to stay here overnight, as the case may be, I trust you will all do so in perfect comfort and security. But enough of my crowing. Now that we are all met and uh, he casts his eye toward the digital clock hanging upon the wall only a few minutes after midnight, the scheduled meeting time, only running a few minutes behind, let us take this opportunity to introduce ourselves. Uh, Miss, um, I believe we had started with you before we were interrupted. He says, turning to you, Margot. Uh, a woman looks up from the table. She's holding a, a notepad and like a red pen uh, that she seems to be doodling on. She looks more or less uh, like me. Long, dark hair, uh, pulled back, uh, close fitting, dark clothes. And a pair of glasses. Did you need me to introduce myself again? Uh, I understand it might be terribly tedious, but for the sake of our uh, newly arrived guests, if you would not mind. 
Uh, sure. Um, Margo Tynan, Clan La Sombra. Uh, I'm here from Washington, D.C. Apologies for being Do late. Oh, it's it's not my meeting. Have you guys been to DC? Oh, you're West Coasters, aren't you? We'll have to talk. When she says Clan La Sombra, I make a point to sit between Annabelle and her. Uh Margot will like wave her hand. Did Bunny leave? Uh I believe Bunny has stepped outside to attend to his restaurant's patrons. Okay. That's fine. Would you like for me to have him fetch you anything? No, I just, she pokes it like a mug on the table. I know I don't drink it, but I don't like when it gets cold. I hold it for my hands, you know, keeps them warm. I just wanted more coffee. I understand. I understand. Uh, if he uh, comes by again, I shall give him a ring. I'll definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's... And I suppose we'll make that too then. She leans around Victor to smile at Annabelle. See? Friends already. <laughs> yeah. Fellow coffee fiends. Mm -hmm. uh, after Margot has made her introductions, uh, the reverend then indicates a rather wiry looking man who is seated uh, to the right of her. Uh, he is, as I mentioned, oh, wiry framed. The suit that he's wearing seems to be rather wrinkled. Uh, his olive skin complexion hangs sallow and sickly upon his face, and there are dark circles that hang like waning crescents beneath his two sunken eyes. Uh, upon being indicated, he sits upright and adjusts the thin black tie around his neck. Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, 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 David David uh, Rothstein of Clan Rothstein uh, of Clan Giovanni Fuck! Of uh, Clan Hakata. Clan Hakata. Fuck, I knew I was going to screw that up. He stares uh, blankly for a few seconds before nervously buttoning his blazer back up and extend, extending a hand toward you first, Victor. Oh, I, um, uh, go ahead. When I shake it, I just say, hey, if you want, I can make you forget about having completely fumbled the intro. Like, you can have another shot at it. You'll think it's organic. It's just, it's, it's like magic, really. Um, no, it, it's probably best that I that I remember my uh, my my uh, my mistakes. Otherwise, how would you learn from them? Uh, I, I'm I like from that. Las Vegas. Uh, uh, um, not Las Vegas. Reno, by by way of Las Vegas. Uh, initially from Las Vegas. He swallows deeply and and audibly clears what sounds like a large blockage from his throat, and then uh, sits back down sheepishly. You're doing great, Mr. Rothstein. You're doing great. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 Baron Temple, was it? Yes. See, I have, I've not been to Los Angeles in uh, in quite some time, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun town. You know, if uh, Elon Musk gets that Hyperloop tunnel going, maybe we'll be, you know, commuting back and forth. <laughs> Uh, well, well, I, 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 I suppose that's the that's the goal of this meeting, huh? Okay. We're here to build Elon Musk a hyperloop tunnel. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. I, uh, I, 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 I just mean you know, uh, coordinating, facilitating. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold for a second. Hold, hold. Thanks, Reno. Is Elon Musk isn't? He's not. Oh, he's that not. guy's a mage. No, he's he's got to be like virtual adepts, hundred okay. percent guaranteed. And then you just uh, Rev okay, okay, just no, please continue. Sorry, just yeah. you did. I mean, I think Reverend, I don't know, uh, but I think Reverend Lenoir then motions to the man seated to the right of David. This man's chunky combat boots are resting crossed upon the table, and he simply crosses his arms, sucking his teeth. Nah, no way. I already introduced myself when I got here. I'm sure as shit not repeating myself. Are you a bruja? He's a bruja, bru bru for sure. How very astute of you, uh, Miss Annabelle. My friends, this rather bellicose individual uh, from Chicago goes by the moniker of Genghis. 
Genghis, as it were, is a rather tall, muscularly built punk dressed in a thick leather jacket adorned with various studs and patches. His hair is clean shaven. There's a tattoo of a sword or some sort of curved dagger that uh, is emblazoned over his right earlobe. And his fierce eyes seem to pierce through the low lighting. Uh, Victor, Annabelle, give me a wits plus awareness check, if you like. I- I would just say when she says, here, he's a bruja, right? I'd lean over to her. I'm like, that's what it's like. That's what you like. I want you to know. That's what you sound like. <laughs> what, a walking stereotype? Great, 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 great. That is five with a messy crit. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, Victor, perhaps it's, it's all the time that you've spent in the company of Nelly G, but... Looking him over, though his style may scream crust punk, the more like scrutiny that you begin to pay to him, you notice that his leather jacket seems to be made from an incredibly buttery material, and it's devoid of any sort of label or brand. It's most likely a custom job. Uh, oh. As he shrugs, you catch what appears to be this deep luxurious red lining underneath his dark faded jeans or designer make the cheapest thing on him as a matter of fact seems to be the safety pin that's currently pierced through his nose and as I you still... notice that yeah go ahead no no please please i, I apologize yeah as you as you notice that uh perhaps there's there's some sort of ancestral bubbling within your ventru blood that, that can't help but chortle at this up-jumped bruja. Go ahead and make a rouse check for me. I, just, I lean over to... I, I do pass. Uh, I lean over to Annabelle and I say, he's a fucking trust fund bruja. This kid's a poser. Do you know how much that jacket costs? Oh my god. I, four. I got, I got a four. Um, yeah, there's those kind of punks on the scene all the time. They're like <laughs> raging against the machine, but they got- Hey, well, should we just whisper amongst ourselves here? What the fuck is going on, Reverend? Uh, my friends, let's let's please try and keep any sort of augmentation until we've at least started to discuss the issues. Uh, Genghis levels a finger toward you, Annabelle. You know, for a second there, I thought you were someone that I knew and I almost shit myself, which, you know, for one of us would be pretty fucked, right? You said your name was Annabelle? Is that right, Mama? That's right. Sir. You know, that makes the second Annabelle that I've met since the embrace. You seem much cooler than the other one, though. Huh. Well, Annabelle, I guess it's your turn. Where are you from? Well, I'm currently on the go, but uh, I can say that I'm from Los Angeles. I see. So, uh, you came here with him? Uh, no. No, we arrived separately. As I said, I'm on the go at the moment. Do you like Arctic monkeys? You seem like a kind of guy that would like Arctic monkeys. Yeah, they're all right. Sucks his teeth somewhat. <laughs> you probably listened to him before they were cool, right? <laughs> you definitely he, had sex AM. He scoffs and, and rolls his eyes, apparently unwilling to, to get into the, uh, into the barbing just yet. Uh, Reverend Lenore laughs, however, at the, uh, at the, the apparent, uh, sudden making of fast friends that has started here at this meeting, before finally he turns to the last person at the table, the one who is seated, now immediately next to the Reverend. And this here, this here is another lost soul that I hope we all will be able to provide a fresh perspective toward. The events of history never seem to be as extreme as they are occurring, but this gentleman here has spent the last several years, I'm told, in torpor, and uh, I know I need not remind any of us assembled that the unlives of the immortals have been shaken pretty fiercely in the past few years. Son, please uh, stand and make yourself known, he says, turning to Vod. We're going to change the lighting here. Um, so uh, he is kind of, uh, he's clean shaven. He looks maybe like late 20s, mid 30s. 
uh, and he's got a, uh, a, a sort of a long leather trench coat on, uh, except if you've ever seen somebody that kind of like biker jacket, but they're trying to look tough, cool. It's like that, except, uh, he hangs out on the, um, on a, on the boardwalk or he's a carny. And this is like new age. Like it's meant to impress tourists who think they know about magic, but he doesn't know about magic. Um, he's got on like kind of an embarrassing amount of silver jewelry. Um, and, um, he is holding a backpack and, uh, kind of clutching it a little bit against his chest and has been watching all of this with sort of like a wide eyed, um, like interest and excitement and nervousness, like like watching a tennis tennis match going back and forth between everyone, uh, like sometimes smiling nervously, like he wants to get a joke but he doesn't, um, and and sometimes like looking nervous, like oh is there going to be a fight? Um, <clears throat> so he he stands up and he says, "Uh, hey." Hey everybody, I'm uh, I'm I'm, I'm Vod. Uh, thanks thanks so much for uh, thanks thanks for uh, letting me be here. Uh, I know. I just thanks for thanks for letting me be here. <sighs> so you know who's from Vod? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I I'm kind of from. I mean. Recently down by Milwaukee, uh, it's it's just been, you know, it's it's been a little it's been a little nuts, um, uh, kind of, uh, it, yeah. I I, I I I um, now who who brought me in here? That would be uh, the Reverend, Lamar, right? You are. And, and so I'm like the the Reverend was was nice enough. Uh, I was I was in a bit of a way, and uh, 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 so it, like, it, it, yeah, yeah. So I kind of just I kind of just woke up, and before then, I but even before then, I didn't know much about this. Um, this whole uh, you know like you know so uh and anyway i'm just really glad to be here uh and thank you and i'll i'll just i'm just going to probably i'll just i'll just hang back i know that um so uh and and he does he looks a little like he, he, a, a little sallow a little sunken eyed he's not wearing eye makeup well actually you know he might be wearing a little bit of eye makeup but also he is a little hollow eyed looks a little whatever but he's like yeah thank you uh thank you and like sits down and like puts his backpack like on his lap um just kind of sitting there you know there have been the new star wars movies well yeah there are three the star wars movies no, 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 no. Like, yeah, see, now like, there's six, only six, only six. Oh, come on. The, don't be, don't be like that, man. Those three other prequels are somebody's favorite movies. So, no, 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 no wait. Okay. When was the last time you, okay, we'll get back to this later. Sorry. Um, please, Reverend, uh, why have you brought us all here? Genghis rolls his eyes and, and scoffs audibly more than once during the discussion of pop culture. But regardless, the uh, the Reverend put it, back in, put it back in your pants. Hot topic. <laughs> places <laughs> the Reverend places his hand uh, not on Vod's shoulder, but rather on the back of the chair, uh, and continues. Well, a sheep will always need a shepherd, and I am always willing to act as such. And I suppose that brings us. To myself. As I have previously elucidated, my name is Reverend Lenoir, Lenoir, Reverend Marquess Lenoir, if you would prefer. I am 214 years old. 
I was born in South Carolina to, we'll call it immense privilege. Privilege that was blinding, but it was a blindness that did not follow me past seminary. I realized the great hypocrisy, the great crime that had been perpetuated by my people onto a folk who had never harmed or offended us in any way. Galatians 5.1 tells us that it is for freedom that he has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. It is a verse that has haunted my every waking moment, and I decided that I would no longer be a party to such heinous sin. I devoted my life to abolition, and I gave my life for it, I am proud to say. And though it was through that which I met one who made me who I am tonight... It is the sin that I ignored in life that I am now blessedly damned for eternity, and that I may perform his will by casting off the shackles of servitude. And so it is that I say unto you that it is my divine purpose to be that of the Anarch movement. But there is one thing that we lack that our enemies do not, and that is cohesion, organization, networking. In these modern nights, the depredations of the Second Inquisition make our respective territories little more than islands in a vast sea of non-communication. This is no mere accident. This has been orchestrated thus, to keep us scattered, to keep us divided. But tonight, tonight, my friends, we have an opportunity to end that. And I propose that we do so by an airing of grievances. None of us would be anarchs if we did not have grievances or problems plaguing our cities. And I encourage us to share them amongst ourselves. For after all, you may never know when you may meet someone who is capable of solving said problems. Tell us, Baron Temple, how is it that you find yourself maintaining your domain in these troubled nights? And what problems do you face? I, I, uh, oh, yes, Vaughn? I mean, <clears throat> just, uh, I, I don't want to interrupt, but when you said abolition, like, like the way, like the, the way back, like, you, like that, that he one, was a abolition? Owner. he owned slaves. They, Whoa, owned slaves. shit. Yeah. Um, like, good job, right. man. I, I knew, My I friend. knew. I knew I got you. Like, I knew, like, we were the same. Like, man, I voted for Bernie Sanders twice. We're, we're, and he puts up for Nux, right? Oh, I, 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 I found it. I found it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. right. Yeah. I, we get each other. Like, now it makes sense. Okay. I'm oh. sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry to, um, yeah. I didn't just wish to congratulate myself for doing what should have been the right and obvious thing with almost two centuries of hindsight upon it, there is still a great shame that I carry because of predilections of my family. But regardless, uh, it was that your only question, Vaughn? I, I just really wanted to make sure I knew kind of what was going on. Uh, but I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Vaughn, I'm putting together a PowerPoint. I was exactly where you were. Like... Oh. Uh, we'll, we'll that'd talk. be like that'd be great. That'd be great. Life comes at you pretty fast, uh, Reverend. Unlife comes at you even faster. <laughs> and he like goes up top. No, we're, 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 no, we're still not being us yet, Annabelle. This is business us, business us. All right, Reverend. I noticed you left out one very important piece of information and that is what clan you represent which i have my suspicion but i would not insult a gentleman by guessing incorrectly well what if i were to invite you to make your guess ministry you are rather perceptive baron temple Yes, I believe that is the nomenclature by which myself and my fellows choose to go by this night it was. I mean, guessing it doesn't is. always work. Yeah, and that I mean, would seem I, In this I mean, I hate the government, uh, and I got bit to death outside a minor threat concert, and I'm not a Ruha. I hold you up my have phone. The Monopoly hold, on punk. I hold up my phone when it is off so that the screen is kind of shimmering or reflective and show it to her that she doesn't have a reflection. And I say, sometimes you don't need to guess. 
I mean, I also told you guys, I just mean, you know, that uh, I think as anarchs, something that's good for us is to divorce ourselves from these notions that any clan has to be any one way. I think these are tools that certain sects use to tell us how we should be and how we should act and not allow us to be the true kindred we should be. But I don't know. I'm from DC, we're chatty. Is it- I would agree with you that most anarchs don't necessarily fit the standard mold, but that is not always the case. Yes, Vod, I apologize. You were trying to say something. No, no, I uh, I don't know if, like, really technically I'm an anarchist. I mean, they have some really good ideas. No, 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 but it's I'm, not. Anarch's I'm, not. It's not actual anarchy. It's not. It's like they we believe in things. It's yeah, that. yeah. But I'm I'm more of a libertarian. Um. So yeah, like, yes, can I still be uh, here? Is that cool? Is it cool if I'm still here? Uh, because I, I just don't want to. Just trying to be honest. Like cards on the table. Uh, we are here to share many different perspectives, my dear oh, God, and cool. hopefully cool. we'll end up learning something from some of your fellows uh cool you, actually i pull i pull a little notebook out of my backpack um and i i i like and i get ready to like take some notes um but back to the uh the topic presented uh, baron temple i understand if this is putting you on the spot unduly and i do not wish to impugn upon your uh patience nor your uh nor your your discretion, but at any rate, uh, the question still stands. As a representative of the Anarch Three States, how are you finding your governance in these modern nights? Uh, it is not an inconvenience at all. I knew what this meeting was and why I attended it. Uh, my domain has stood first and foremost through diplomacy. Um, I negotiated a truce between the Anarchs and the Camarilla, which is blessedly still holding. Who knows for how much longer, but every night is another opportunity to prepare ourselves and align our efforts um, in just talking amongst the clans, of which the Ministry in Los, Los Angeles, particularly in the Valley, are in fact allies of mine and working very closely with my uh, fellow Barons. Because, quite frankly, the reason why we have a truce with the Camarilla is they realize that it would be too difficult and costly to go into open war with us, and quite frankly, they might lose it. So, in that, an uneasy and inevitably temporary peace is maintained, but I will take a temporary peace over endless war. Annabelle, would you say that this is a accurate representation? Or do you perhaps see things differently? Baron Temple has done a remarkable job of keeping peace in the city and of ruling with with empathy. It is it is something that I think is unusual for our kind. I know. That being said. It still is just a shuffling about of the status quo. The problem with the Anarchs is that we tear each other apart because of our very nature of being rebellious, of being questioning, of wanting things to be better. We have differing ideas of how to make things better. Whereas the Camarilla, they represent the status quo. And for them, they can be lockstep in supporting it. All the rules have been built for them. All of, <clears throat> all of history is behind them. And so we have the harder task of pulling down what they have established of what we've all grown up with, but it's necessary. And I say that we have to take radical steps in order to make any sort of meaningful change, anything that won't result in another uh, outbreak of war or another culling or a another, I mean, with everything afoot, with, with Gehenna and with just the turmoil in the world right now, we have to take drastic action and we have to take it together. Genghis gives a slow applause at that. Now, that's a little bit more of something that I expected out of somebody out of the Anarch Free States. I take it 
you're the Salvador Garcia of your little uh, of your little duo here, whereas uh, uh, Baron here is the uh, is is the is the cautious approach type. <laughs> He's a little older, and he tempers my fire with caution. You see, that's the thing that's sticking in my craw right now, because what I'm wondering is, is what is one of us doing, fetching and stepping and marching to the beat of what some venture says? It's a partnership. You don't have partners or people that you work with. I mean, how, how, you know, how how do you afford your green day tickets and everything, you know? No, 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 don't get me wrong. I, I'm sure that that's exactly how he has put it to you. And I'm sure that he's done a very good job of convincing you that it's a partnership. I'm not insecure in where I stand with my allies. I don't feel like I have to buck the system or anything within my own coterie. Like, this is what I'm talking about, is we may have different ideas about how to make things better, but we really do have to work together to make it happen, to make any sort of progress. We can't sort of like tick all the boxes about Bruja and rebel for rebellion's sake. I don't care if I have to work with a suit in order to get shit done because we get shit done in LA. How is, where is it you're from, Chicago? How is Chicago, Chicago doing? Yeah, it seems like Prince Kevin Jackson kind of has things on lock over there. And by the way, if you would like to learn what it means to be a real anarch bruja that actually makes a meaningful impact, I can introduce you to Nines Rodriguez. I assure you he could teach you some important things that you are clearly lacking. Nines Rodriguez. Well, I'm already in good with Tins Ramirez, so I think I got one up on you. At any rate, who the fuck is this who the fuck am I? Who the fuck are you? He stands up and whoa, like whoa, I stand okay. up too. Like what? Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, <laughs> please, I beg of you. Uh, let's not shop in our claws right, so readily. Does anyone need to feed? Can I get libations for anyone? I don't uh, don't know that Fine. this would uh, meet my dietary parameters, and I sit back down. Uh, look, I'm... look. May I? Uh, you know. Cool things down a little. Forgive me Please. and my type wow. for always being the ones to talk about the end, but to what end? We talk about coming together and making change. For what? What is the goal? We never talk about if we all have the same goals or not. It's always how we get there. For me, I have the goal. I have what I want. Washington, D.C. is the safest place in the world for a Kendra to be left alone and do her own thing. And frankly, we all deserve that. In my opinion, we just need what we have in D.C. We just need more of it. You're welcome to come visit. I know Kindred from D.C., and they tell me that the Inquisition has the tightest lid on that place because all it takes is somebody to go out and dominate Congress, and it's World War III. You really think it's the safest place? I don't know. You live there. I'm just telling you what I heard. You're exactly right. That's why it's the safest place in the world, because it's run by the smartest Kindred in the world. Anyone else in D.C. would probably do exactly what you're discussing. The Praetor is a little different. He doesn't run things that way. He has it on lock, and I do what I want. Everyone I know, we don't have to sit in diners and argue about what we're doing together, because all that's handled. You want true anarchy? You want the peace to live the life, the unlife you want to live without having to sit in rooms and argue for it? You want DC, I'm telling you. I'm very happy there, and I don't even have to own a cell phone. What is it that you want? What is is it that you are free to do now that you have peace in your city? How do you use it? Well, I mean, the peace that we have is it comes with certain things. For example, I'm welcome at this party, but not a lot of others. (sighs) Frankly, Uh. I would call myself sect agnostic. And I think that's a fair way to be. I think that the unfortunate thing is when you spend too much time in either sect, 
or in any organization, no offense to those who I'm sure run fantastic organizations in this room, I'm sure you guys are exempt from what I'm about to say. Uh, frankly, it sucks to be under someone who's not as good at your job as you are. It sucks to have a boss who's worse at their job than you, right? That is something that the grand Ventru and my people can always agree on. Sucks when the person who's in charge is just eh, bad at their job. I happen to live somewhere where the person in charge does a great job, does it exactly the way I think I ought to be. it ought to be done. So what do I do? I do my job. I do my work. I follow my passions. I still have those, you know, and you guys do too. Maybe if you weren't so busy always having to chase your tails to buy your own freedom, maybe we'd be able to, oh, I don't know, think, stop barking at each other all the damn time. And where is my copy? My hands are so freezing. I will check on that for you. Uh, the Reverend uh, steps uh, toward the end of the double doors and uh, uh, begins typing a message on a cell phone. Yeah, uh, Margo, you're right. We shouldn't always have to have these labels and, and fit into these boxes and, and categorize ourselves, but you know, that's sort of the purpose of language, right? Is to express what we want and what we need and Yeah. yeah. In independence is a myth. There is nothing enlightened about saying that you twist in the wind and shift your allegiances to whatever moment serves you. That just sounds like the Camarilla light. That's literally fucking all of us. That's why we're in this room right now, because it serves us right now. At any second, if it stops serving us, this delightful conversation will go a completely different way. So yes, I'm glad that you've achieved some form of stasis in DC. We have as well in LA. They have in Chicago. They have in New York. It just all looks very different in which person is sitting on the top of the mountain. That's all. But it, but it matters that it's, well, I mean, let's say his name, Marcus Vitel. It matters that it's him. It matters that it's him because of who he is. I'm not saying that we should never have any boss. We need a boss. It just needs to be someone that knows what they're doing. And I don't know couple thousand years of being part of both sects and deciding that they're both terrible at it. Sure. Uh, to some who really, really are attached to their relationship with the sects, for some people, that's their whole identity. I guess that can be troubling. And they don't want to live in that city because they want the freedom to stay and fight this forever war. That's not freedom to me. That's conscription. To me, and as far as I see it, everywhere else in the world is just different flavors of being conscripted into a forever war. We in Washington, D.C., a safe city for many La Sombra like myself, is, well, for lack of a better word, a nice, dark, quiet room. But we don't have to hear all the noise. I've I guess I just think you guys deserve it, too. I've heard the stories of Vitel. I, I have not made the man's acquaintance. Uh, Vod. You said you're from Milwaukee? I mean, uh, outside of like kind of Kenosha, more Kenosha. You, it, okay, so I got several questions here. Man, I apologize, because I'm digging this. I'm digging the aesthetic. I love this, like, Inya Pure Moods thing you got going here. But you said you have only been awake a little while, and you didn't know that there were only six Star Wars, and there are. But you voted for Bernie Sanders twice. You're from a little corner of Wisconsin, but you're here because the Reverend's got high hopes for you. So what's your deal again, man? Um... I uh, thought he voted for him once. I, I just heard that he voted for him, and that was like a couple no, months said, ago, right? No, he said twice. He said twice. Like, if yeah. you're telling me that you're taking off carbonite sickness or whatever, that's cool. But, like, hang on. Like, things aren't adding up. So, I. Okay. Like, I couldn't, you know, I mean, I, I supported him twice, but, you know, right? I, that was an exaggeration. I was a little excited. I wanted to see him cooler around you folks I understand the man has been in politics for quite some time no yeah. no no i mean there was I just guess. a lot there was just a lot of politics talk and uh and yeah. i uh 
if we're gonna have cards on the table, we need to have cards on the table. You guys know who we are, Annabelle and I. Like you can't not know us, you know. And and we're in the process of finding out who you people are, but we need to know who it is we're playing ball with. So like like, when were you so, turned? When did you wake back up again? So, what happened is, uh, I, I woke up in a ditch. And uh, and then it was real confusing. And then I figured out vampires are real. And then some shit happened. And I was just kind of getting on top of it. And I found out that, like, it's, like, how I can kind of get along. And then... Uh, and then... Uh, somebody comes at me. And it turns out the whole steak thing... I'm guessing you guys know, like, it's for real, real, right? Like, when, like, that actually, like, then you can't move, and it's very bad. And, uh, and apparently, then sometimes you can kind of be dead again for a while and then wake back up again, like, about three days ago. And, uh, and some days have gone by, like, some, like, a, some time's gone by. And I am in a whole different place. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, this kind of isn't anybody else's problem, but I just, I really appreciate the Reverend, like, kind of, I mean, he was super cool, like, tried to fucking lift his wallet off of him. And, uh, and he did not kill me like a chicken, which, again, kindred souls. And so, but anyway... So yeah, it's I. I'm sort of self-taught. Uh, was self-taught. I kind of met a few people. That was like three months, years ago, and uh, it's torpor, right? You said when I when I I was in that the, is I was in torpor, yes. and then I woke up again. So, and then he is like willing to be kind of like mama duckling to me for a little bit, uh, and he said, I, I mean. No offense, but I did hear you kind of whisper it to yourself. It's like, do I kill him right here and now and maybe stop him from going off like a bomb? Or do I take him along for a while and see if he's worth anything? Which I appreciate that benefit of the doubt, even though I'm guessing you didn't mean for me to hear it. By the way, I can... Yeah, like, that out loud. That's such a villain thing to do. I'm no, sorry. no, no. Like, he, he's just kind of, like, I, he whispered, I can hear so much shit now, guys. Like, I hear you know, crazy shit all the time. Like, you know how oh, Nelly's, you know, Nelly's like, always worms dropping on earth. us. Yeah. I can hear the worms in the earth. It's just like in that movie with Tom Cruise. Um... That I'm sorry. Oh, like oh, you saw that movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. right. That was I, I mean I'm sorry that I, I have, just I have I have brought thought here to provide an educational experience for him and to hopefully get him set upon the right track as he reacclimates to kindred life. Uh Vod, I understand that you may have things in which you may wish you bring up, but beyond anything else, I merely hope for you to absorb, observe, and hopefully get a decent education. Man, and that's exactly it. That's what I, I I'm sorry I kinda talked way more than I meant to. I am here to observe and absorb and kinda get a grip on some of these things. Uh, because, and I really appreciate, I, I will say one thing though, uh, you said, and I'm super, there's just a lot of names right now. Um, uh, Annabelle, yes. An Annabelle, uh, you said like, I, I mean, I, I took some, uh, you know, I, I, I had a religious studies minor. So like, you know, what you're talking about with, uh, the, the, the car, Carmilla, there's a group of people and like, they're like, and I, I, I gathered that, that they're like, they kind of got some of their shit figured out and they're all in alignment. And like, that's like, man, the Republicans, they are lockstep. And that's what's bugged me and my friends for like ages. They like do it. And they're like, we're, yeah, we're at whatever, but at least we're all pointed in the same direction. So they, they're assholes all at once. And that works real good. But like, so like if the, the, those folks, and you're like, hey, at least they have rules. 
that's actually like I don't know if you guys know about the Aryan Christians back in the day. They had like a way better Christianity, um, like way better Christianity, and they were really cool compared to some of the like stuff that we have now. And they're really uptight. But like that Aryan Christianity, it died out because the Christianity we have now, they had uh, they came up with the Nicene Creed. And so, and that mean means that like they all knew what they, they all like got together and they're like, hey, here's what we believe that like Jesus is really cool. Um, and we I'm believe like- that he died. So, I, 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 yeah, right. I, I can't remember all of it. But the thing is, they wrote down all of what they said and then they all repeated it all the time. And that's why they won. And all the Aryan Christians just were cool, but they didn't all write it down and kind of agree what they believed. So, like, maybe maybe that's not very anarchy, but maybe that's what you guys need to do so you can all, like, oh, hook here's, your stars to the same wagon. You know? Here's why yeah. that won't work, uh, man. Because okay. the Anarchs are not defined by what we believe we're defined by what we don't believe we're defined oh no by the man that we that's are... what the republicans are like it sucks man you don't want to do that they don't believe in anything they're just like no no health insurance fuck you obama that's you like... not find this kid in a ditch he's too good i'm yes, think, I, understand, I... I understand how we ended up in the ditch uh i think we are also <laughs> kind of taking our eye off the ball here uh yeah of course sure, sure. Deserve i'm sorry i probably no no i no, i'm super hey, man this is your own life too. Whatever happens, it affects you as well. You know that's really it's, that's it, really cool of you. But but a super, I should be more quiet. I, I'm here to listen. No, I'm here to listen. God's right. Before the council at Nice, like Mary wasn't a virgin. They put down some hard and fast facts. You know just, that just have stuck around for months. Right. They just Man. co-opted the greatest hits of pagan religion. No, they were just like, here's exactly. what the Egyptians believe. They need ISIS and Osiris. Wait, hang on. No, that's a whole other thing. And I'm oh, not man. doing this with a ministry, dude. Hang on. Wait, everybody stop. Reverend, what exactly is the outcome of this meeting? Otherwise, we will be here for the next week and a half. And I guarantee you do not have enough for me to eat here. Oh, I would certainly be willing to put that theorem to the test. But I would not. It is my, it is my hope that if nothing else we can arrive at some sort of uh, if not necessarily a, an, an anarch manifesto with which we can disseminate to all corners of the globe I, I do not have any sort of belief that we will be able to come to that not when it has taken uh, nearly half of a millennia for us to even uh, begin to be at a point where we can have meetings such as this there will never be one central belief, but I do believe in a cross pollination, as it were. The way that things are done in Los Angeles are rather different from the way that they are done in Macon, Georgia, or how they are done in Milwaukee. And yet, perhaps the only reason why some places are having the problems that they are is that they are simply unaware of certain solutions to certain problems that have come to arise. It is at that moment that David Rothstein, who has previously been rather quiet, uh, suddenly speaks up. Uh, There's there's been a lot of talk of um, of, of, of peace lately. Uh, Peace is is an interesting uh, expression when you come to think about it. Like I said, I uh, originally... Uh, was living in, uh, well, not living, but I, I was originally residing in Las Vegas. And uh, I don't know if uh, any of you all know about what happened in Las Vegas, but uh, these uh, new mortal hunters, this, uh, this, this, this second inquisition, uh, they came through. And uh, I, I I think it was I think it was Tacitus that said they have created a desert and called it peace. And that's pretty much what we were looking at there. Could you imagine the streets of Los Angeles completely devoid of kindred? With 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 mortal hunters going from door to door and rooting us out one by one. You, 
you think it, it, it's something that can't happen, right? Because that's what your sire always tells you that that the mortals are are, are things to be subjugated and and to to be controlled. But they they got their shit together, and that was always the problem with hunters, right? Is that they were always so divided, so scattered. You, you deal with one group of weekend warriors here, and it didn't matter because they were just one little group. They weren't talking with each other. They weren't communicating, and now 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 all of a sudden they are. And now all of a sudden, it's it, it, it's it's a huge problem. It's a huge threat. Uh, so maybe there is is something to be said. If if for no other reason, just for communication. If not, I'll, I'll outright com- uh, cooperation. After I mean, any- I lay my head down pretty close to an awful lot of those. Uh, high magazine human power, we'll say. Uh, the kind of living in living in DC, you, it's not too hard to find yourself on some sort of official list if you're not careful. But I sleep great. Uh, they're scary, but I mean, I I sleep down the street from where they sleep, and they don't bother me. Uh, they don't bother you until they do. The reason why we have achieved the truce in Los Angeles. They ain't bothered me for a long time. That's very sweet. I don't know how old you are, but I've slept in D.C. pretty comfortably for enough years that, well, let's just say I don't have to set an alarm anymore. Well, they slept very comfortably in Vienna for centuries until fucking Predator drones blew it up. Uh, the reason yeah, why that was them. <laughs> the reason why we have achieved the peace we have in Los Angeles is because the word is spreading of our common enemy, our real enemy, the hunters and the Inquisition, and through no small part of Annabelle, making sure that everyone understood that our enemies are not each other. We have ideological differences against each other, but we can talk. There are others that will kick in the door in broad daylight and burn the house to the ground and they are already in all of our cities yes already i absolutely agree on on that you and i agree and uh, annabelle i don't know about what you did but i thank you for it um yeah no i don't i'm not trying to argue that what i'm saying is i feel like washington dc is a good pilot program the problem is There aren't enough people who are good at the job to do what needs to be done. That I don't know what to do about. Maybe Vod's right. We start making a training manual. So, Margo, I'm so glad Mm. that DC works for you and that you are able to have your haven and sleep well and not be afraid. But I'm sure there are many in your city that aren't the same way. And unfortunately, if we all stick to what's best for each of us and not what's good for the group, then we all get taken down. Because Victor's right. We have common enemies. And while we stay the same, we look the same, we form our habits, we learn to sleep well despite the horrors that we have to do every night, the world changes around us. The world is always changing, and even as humans, as we get older, sometimes we get set in our ways, and we don't adjust to the changes that happen, and that happens doubly if we live for hundreds of years. We can't let that happen. We have to move with the times. We have to band together. That's what we did in Los Angeles, and yeah, we might be fighting a war occasionally, the forever war you were talking about, but some things are worth fighting for. Here's the thing. I just don't know if there's logic in the sanctity of every kindred on life, right? I mean, if we're looking to stop people who are killing kindred, we might as well go stop the Sabbat, which they're crazy. They're doing their own thing. I mean, what are we going to do next? Fight the sun? I mean, we kind of do by only going out at night. Let me move this But that's what I'm saying. Even if we had everything we ever wanted, whatever that means to you, we still live in a world that is inherently ah, trying to kill us. We can't go out. It doesn't matter how much power we have. We we can't go do 
what some of them do. The the darkness is our friend. That's what will save us. I mean, spoken like a true Lasombra, you are a credit to your clan. And as you look outside in these abominable conditions, these humans manage to survive a world that's trying to kill them, although I still have no fucking idea why anybody lives here. Let me tell exactly. you. Exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, Victor, as you glance out toward the diner, uh, you see that Ryan has uh, opted to apparently not wait out by the car any longer. Uh, he is currently seated at a uh, diner table uh, with a mug of coffee, currently uh, shivering profusely. Uh, you don't need to, even with the tinted window, uh, you can still see that he clearly could not take the cold much longer and see, had to go inside. This is why, and I look at Annabelle, and I'm like, this is why I'm always with Campbell or Bailey. I said stay with the car, not stand out and freeze to death. In the car, still with the I just text him, and I, I text Ryan, get it to go. Make a circuit. <laughs> around this place and make sure it's secure. Uh, there is a brief moment and you're able to watch it sort of occur silently. Uh, he checks his phone and then sort of looks around nervously as though, where the hell did the, did you happen to come from? And then rather hurriedly stands, puts a couple of bills on the table and uh, hurries back outside as though his ass is on fire. This, Whatever this, you're paying this, these people, Victor, it's really not enough. You know, some of them, absolutely. Others, maybe a bit too much. Um, is here, that your look. particular taste? You only like them if their blood is slushy first? You, you, I can we, I actually can like, we do blood slushies? You know, is that the thing? I bet thing? you no, outside it, for long enough, you could. Is, yeah, it's, it's fairly terminal. No, like you get one shot at it. Um... Oh. This, uh, no, he's not my <laughs> he's not my taste. Although I deeply suspect that at different time you very much would have been. Um, let me tell you all what it is um, I'm prepared to do. As I said, I have accomplished what I've accomplished through diplomacy. So if you all want to have open lines of communication where we can let, make it be known if we have a problem and assist each other, however we can, I'm absolutely for it. Uh, of course, we all have to mind our own uh, lands and holdings, as it were, and can't necessarily rush off to Kenosha to go to war or to D.C. or to Chicago, even though I do definitely want to be in the same room as Kevin Jackson at least once. I get mistaken for the guy a lot. That's weird. Yeah, but if I can see it. But if there's anything I can do to help you all survive the coming night so that we can meet back on this same spot 200 years from now, whatever is standing here, you have my support. And that, Baron Temple, is exactly the sort of thing that I am talking about. We cannot, of course, hope to solve all of the problems of Kindred Kind in one evening, but we have all met each other. We have all made introductions at this point. And... What is 200 years in the lifespan of an immortal? Let us hope that perhaps, given enough time for all of us, we plant these seeds now so that we may rest under the shades of the trees when they finally grow. Annabelle is right, though. So many of us rebel purely for the sake of rebelling. Like children that refuse to eat their vegetables simply because it's green, even if they would love it. I mean, I would argue it's potentially... a required part in the life cycle of every immortal. We all go through phases. I mean, what I was talking about earlier was, you is, know. Is, is being an anarch like kindred puberty? Is that what you know? I'm really asking. This isn't not, like, I'm really like, is that, is uh, that a... Uh, what I'm specifically referring to is that I think... Well, well, I, I mean, I, I guess it's only natural that in a, anyone's lifestyle you get to a certain age where you start wanting to, you know, push your boundaries and, and figure out what, what those boundaries are. I, 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 I guess uh, uh, a certain rebellious streak is, is only natural. Humans, for those think the, humans do get more conservative as they get older. Wait, you, holy shit. You, wait, 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 wait. No, I know some anarchs that, that are old as shit, though. Like Theo Bell just switched. He does Jeremy no, McNeil. No, no. Like, uh, 
Oh, Victor, you make an excellent point. Wait, wait. Excuse me. Are you about to say something bad about Theo Bell? That guy's a punk. He's a poser. He's a phony. That guy this waited until the grass was greener on the other side, and then he finally decided to switch after playing Anarch for how many decades? He, or made, the grass, for how many he decades? made the grass greener. He shot fucking Hardestat in the face, which wounds me on a second. Yeah, okay. Also, you're okay. sitting here with your I'll dad's credit down. card in your wallet right now, besmirching the name of Theo <sighs> fucking Bell? How dare you? How dare I? Yeah, okay. Okay. I think I'd like to come back to the point and say that I think what's interesting to me and speaks to Victor's point, as well as to the point of the uh, ruler of the, of the city in which I make my home, is that what is important to me about Anarchs is not that the youngest kindred I know find comfort in the Anarch movement or simply being sect agnostic, as I say, but that the oldest kindred I know and trust do. I don't think that um, we should give ourselves space for these conversations and move away from the sects because the young always have the right of it, but rather that many of the very old among us have grown past the need for these things. And I think that if the very old and the very young of us agree on a certain amount of freedom, then what's with all the middle management in between fucking it up for the rest of us? Margo, as you are speaking... Uh, very suddenly, the the lights within the room suddenly seem to go out. Oops. As that happens, happens that's true. Genghis turns and looks at you. Man, what the fuck is this shit? Uh, as that happens, you all look around the room and you notice that the digital clock on the wall is still producing light, and the light is still coming from that. Those of you who have spent... Uh, a great deal of time in the company of other Lasombra and uh, within the the powers of Oblivion, know that if this were that, no light would be permeating through here. Whatever this darkness is, it is likely not coming from Marco. She just uh, wordlessly points at the light, the, the the clock light, as if to say, "Not me." Victor Vod, very much Vod has put dreams. <laughs> I was gonna say, Victor very much has put his hand on the gun, but hasn't cleared leather and put his other hand on Annabelle's arm, but like looks right at her and does that math himself. <laughs> like, cause it's about to be like, boom. Oh, oh, wait, hang on. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, the door opens uh, and uh, Bunny enters. The Reverend stands and takes the two mugs of coffee and appears to have a rather hushed uh, conversation with him. Uh, a very brief one before turning around. Ladies and gentlemen, I I apologize. Uh, perils of, I suppose, the weather. It appears that the uh, that the the winter frost has um has knocked out the power to the surrounding area. But no worries. Uh, this place is outfitted with an external generator, and if you would allow my man, but uh, merely half an hour, we should be able to. Uh, to get things up and running. In the meantime, I suppose not all of us are uh, were were born and raised in the age of the electric light bulb, and so I have no problem with continuing if you all are comfortable in doing so. I can see you're fine. I can see fine too, but also like on uh, on the farm we had a, a diesel generator in back. If he ever needs any, if he needs any help, if he needs an extra pair of hands. I'm sure Ben Bunny is uh, more than capable, but I do appreciate your uh, your willingness to to, to volunteer. Okay, uh, Mr. Tim. No, this is actually for the storyteller. Um, I text Ryan. I text Ryan. Fuckery's afoot. Be ready to clear out of here. And I show Annabelle that that's what I've uh, typed. And I and then I hit send. <laughs> so noted. Okay. So with that, and with fuckery seemingly afoot. I think I now might play. be. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I. You know what? I can ask you my question during the break. It's a storyteller question, and we're in the same place. So. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So with that, I would like to propose a ten-minute break to allow us to refresh, grab some water. Those of you who are watching at home, to do the same. Uh, and in that time, after that time, uh, we will return and see just what sort of fuckery is afoot.
Thank you.